Nubs, Cool Cats, and Comics on Facebook, and follow them on Instagram. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of Pen of Cool Cats and Comics. I am your host Dennis with uh, my lovely co-host Teresa. Hello. <laughs> As you can tell, this is not Teresa. Unfortunately, Teresa couldn't be with us tonight. But um, we do have our guest Cyclone, which might he might look familiar to you because he's on the show right before ours in the cage with Cyclone. Yep. Although I do have to say, I'm more well endowed than, than Teresa. Might have to measure one day. <laughs> But yes, unfortunately, she couldn't be with us uh, to recap the last couple of weeks. We kind of were going over our one-year anniversary. Uh, next week, she will be back, and we'll pick it up where we left off, because I, I know we promised a Marvel movie night before the big opening of Endgame, which I wish I bought tickets to the... Not that I would have went the first day, but I see some of them going up to $15,000. You... Much like the rest of it? Watch it at home. It, it's good. You know there's going to be bogus, like, like. Well, well, not to mention the movie's not going to go out after one day. It's not a one-time event. This is something that's going to be in the theaters for months. You, do, I, I, you know, to be the first one to see it, some bragging rights. But if you give spoilers, you're going to be an asshole anyway, and someone's probably going to kick your ass for spoiling the movie for him. But fifteen thousand dollars. I have a car for sale that I can't sell. That's probably worth in the 20s that I'm only trying to sell for 17 that I knocked down to 16. Nobody buys that, but endgame tickets? Yeah, sure. So I'm in the, I'm in the wrong business. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what to make of that. But, yeah, um, I do not plan on going to a big theater on opening night. I do want to see it as close as I can to opening weekend because people will try to ruin it. You oh, know? absolutely. They're, not that they will try to. They're just going to do it. They're not going to be able to help themselves. So you want to know my trick to movies? And I learned it from my father. You go, if a movie opens up on a weekend, you go on Tuesday, the first show. What I'm going to try to do is go the Friday of opening weekend, but during the day. When most people are at work, but then again, people are spending 15000 for tickets. They might not have a job. They might just be independently wealthy and buy all the seats in the theater. Who knows? I, first of all, if you but buy I will, I will say this. i got to put this out there. If I do get tickets, and V, I'm telling you right now, if I get tickets for Friday and anyone wants to give me anything over 1000 I will sell them. I don't care. I'm not stupid. But wait a second. Like, if you buy tickets to a sporting event, it's a stadium. It's in an arena. It, right. It's, if if you go on eBay and sell your tickets, right, the person that, that buys it has to go to your theater. It's not like, you, right. oh, I got a ticket. I could go into any theater. Different theaters have different tickets. Right. I don't know if, like, AMC has, like, a specific movie pass that you could maybe use in any of them. But I know, like, the theaters now, a lot of them do even have assigned seating. Right. But, you know, we are in Long Island. There are a lot of rich, stupid people out here. So it's very, very possible <laughs> that I might be able to get these things sold. So I, I have no problem. I will sell the but tickets. But how are they going to say it? They, they're going to have to ask you, what movie theater are you doing? Well, yeah, just... absolutely. I'll just say, hey, I got it for this theater at this time. Uh, the starting bid's at, at, you know, I'll start at 500. We'll get some action on it. But, you know, again, I, I have no problem. I'm not stupid. I will sell it, especially if it's for $15,000. I'll tell you what, you give me twenty, I'll give you the ticket and throw my car in. Twenty thousand dollars. You get a ticket to see Endgame and my car. So but I'm gonna I'm gonna see it <laughs> with all the old people on Tuesday morning. Uh, yeah, V knows more about the AMC clubs and all that. She said you still need a specific theater and showtime, that's for sure. But I, I wanna get started, because uh, I know there was a big weekend with WrestleMania and there's a lot of MMA stuff going on right now. Uh, and just good fights in general. So Let's get into the sponsors. I want to start with Kayla Logistics. Kayla Logistics, where your business is our priority. Moving, moving products you use every day across the country and around the world. Contact Frank Zambuto for all of your domestic and international logistic projects. Frank has over 20 years experience working with many name brand companies in the apparel, cosmetics, as seen on TV, and electronic industries. For trucking, air, and ocean cargo on all seven continents, all you need is one solution. To all Cool Cat listeners, just mention our show, and Frank will offer a free cost and transit time analysis for all your cargo. When cost and time matter, we deliver Frank Zambuto and K Logistics 
where your business is our priority. And you can reach them directly at 347-536-3933 or his email at frank at kalogistics.com. Now, Frank is so good at this stuff, he's been posting what's been going on with the tariffs. He's been basically predicting what the market's going to do, what's going on in China. He's an expert on this stuff. So if you, if you need anything in that field, give him a call. He'll definitely hook you up. And we also are pleased to welcome back Day 3 Botanicals. They are well known for their organically grown full spectrum hemp oil rich in CBD. It's wonderful for aches and pains, stress, anxiety, inflammation, and better sleep. The sublingual drops are easy to use once or twice a day or as directed by your healthcare professional. And as promised, after months of trials and testing, Day 3 is proud to offer you their very own Hemp Supreme Pet Formula. A convenient to use liquid in a dropper bottle that allows you to flavor your pet's favorite treat with a healthy full spectrum hemp oil to safely aid your pet's inflammation, aches and pains to relax and calm them, and help them sleep better at night, which is perfect because we're going into July 4th and a lot of pet, pets flip out with the uh, fireworks. I'm sure this will help them. So you can visit day3botanicals.com to see their current lineup. A new topical paint cream is coming soon. And when you go to day3botanicals, three is spelled out, T-H-R-E-E. -E. And you could use our exclusive co code of COOLCATS10 for 10% off, but that 10 is one zero. So COOLCATS10 discount code, Get 10% your order at time of checkout. You can mix and match. And remember that all day three products are organically grown in the United States. No foreign hemp oil or synthetic CBD. They make day three products with your health and well-being in mind. Visit day3botanicals.com for current prices and complete product information. And remember to use the exclusive Cool Cats 10 discount code for our listeners. And I don't know if you use CBD oil, CBD oil or anything like that, but I've heard great things about the uh, topical cream. So I'm definitely looking forward to that coming out. I know some massage places use it. I've been on the verge of tossing it back and forth of starting to use. I don't know. It, it's like with me with getting a tattoo. It's like one day I want it, one day I don't, one day right. I want it. But, well, the good thing, at least this, you could try it out. A tattoo, you can't really, well, I guess you can get a fake <laughs> tattoo, or, but you get a real tattoo, you're kind of stuck with that. You try CBD oil, you don't like it, you know, whatever, you, you tried it. Right. Uh, I know anyone that's used this specific one has had nothing but good things to say about it, myself included. I know Teresa's had great success with it, but not all CBD oils are made equally. You know, some water it down or they use synthetic stuff, and it's not, it doesn't have the same potency. So, you know, sometimes you do get what you pay for, but day three is definitely the real deal. So now that we got that out of the way, uh, your show, which I don't promote either of our shows enough, my own comedy show is coming up, your show. So again, Cyclone is on right before us on this same station, uh, and it's uh, called In the Cage of Cyclone, 7 to 8, every Monday night. Yep. And basically, it's fight sports, right? The easiest way to sum it up. Yeah, originally when, when the show first started, it was just MMA. But MMA is... Despite what the, the, the diehard MMA fans want to think, it's really too niche. It's too tiny. So I started adding boxing in because boxing is a sweet science. It's been around forever. Then I was like, you know what? The real action is wrestling because the wrestling fans are... They're, they're, they're rabid lunatics. And I was like, you know what? I, I need to expand to the wrestling crowd also. So Yeah, you can tell by this weekend how big. Everyone's trashing WWE in the matches. Yet WrestleMania was huge yesterday. It was all over Facebook. Everybody's been talking about it. You saw the crowds going nuts. They basically spent, what, two days there. And I know some of them are still there at Raw tonight. Making I, a whole weekend out of it. Here's the thing. I, th I think that... I think out of the 300 friends of mine, only two said it was disappointing besides me. Everyone else is like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's so perfect. So, no, it wasn't. It's too long. You know what? Actually, WrestleMania is still going on right now. You know, Raw is not happening. It's still <laughs> WrestleMania. Well, usually the Raw right after WrestleMania is kind of like a carryover. It's it's always kind of been, yeah. you know, the leftover matches or this was so good of a success on Sunday, let's recreate it on Monday. And then the Tuesday taping for SmackDown. Right. It 
it, it's so. They, they like, like I, I've said a hundred times over, they need better writing. Their writing is so poor that that, that the, the product suffers from it. Now I'm wondering what it is because I, I I don't watch it anymore. I, I haven't watched it in a long time. I've heard mixed reviews. Even the same people that trash it, are like, oh, you should watch it. It's fun. I'm like, but you just sat there for 20 minutes trashing it. Now you tell me to watch it. I kind of, I kind of got back into it a little bit during the Attitude, Attitude Era, Monday Night Wars. Stone Cold was great. You know, The Rock. It was just fun to watch. Once they started fading away and the new people were coming in, I just completely lost interest again and, and just didn't follow it. But is it really written for me? You know, when I was a kid and I saw Hulk Hogan, that was the best, you know, oh, my God, it's Hulk Hogan. As an adult, when you see him, it's like the guy could barely wrestle. He was just kind of, he was great on the mic. You know, he, he had a, an energy that you, you couldn't beat. But he was he really that good? So I wonder, is, is it bad or is it just that you outgrew it? What do the kids think? You know, what, what do the 10-year-olds and the 12-year-olds think of wrestling right now? They love it. it it's always going to be a... Some, some, I saw someone post today that if you like wrestling, you're a child. Men don't like wrestling. A lot of people I work with would probably disagree with that. <laughs> you know, and, and it's shocking to see it because the, pe the people that, that were all online, the people that were there are adults. And the argument that they say is if you can go to a movie, if you can watch a TV show, and suspend animation for 30 minutes for an hour, then you can like wrestling. The only problem where I throw out is where you have a seven freaking and a half hour event. Yeah, I wanted to get to that too. That, that's just too long for anything. Nobody cares that much about anything that they're going to be that interested from beginning to end. The only people that benefited from a seven and a half hour card were the vendors. And by vendors, I mean the beer vendors. Yeah. Because... The beer, the popcorn, all of that stuff, because all of that's incredibly overpriced. Right, especially at MetLife. And like I said, the only things now that have bombed in MetLife are the Jets, the Giants, and Triple H. Now, the other problem is it's not seven and a half hours of wrestling matches, right? There's a lot of fluff in between, isn't there? There's more fluff now than ever before. And, 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 and that's, what, that's why I got turned off to baseball. There's way too much time between pitches now. The games, they were actually attacking them years ago because the games were taking too long. They actually wanted the time clock for the pitch, like to have a shot clock in basketball. Did they're actually I, do, I, I they're, I'm not against that. They're actually doing it in the minor leagues now. Um, look, as someone who pitched semi-pro and for Long Island University, go Blackbirds, here's, here's the thing. You, you need time in between pitches. In football, you need time between plays. Right, but do you need a few minutes? I mean, I mean guys were pitching complete games. You, you didn't have the the training and everything that these guys have and the ability to, I don't want to say the drugs, but the, the, the supplements and stuff that they are allowed to use back in the day, and people managed to get through. You know, but a guy throws a pitch, and he steps back, and he gets in, and the batter steps back. You want to know why? And it's for not only for baseball, but, but for basketball, football, hockey too, wrestling, MMA, boxing. Athletes today, with all due respect to every athlete watching, they are like cars. They are shiny. They're pretty to look at. But if they get into an accident, they fold like an accordion. Guys from the the golden oldie days, they were built were, tougher. Just they are. They're all right, just like the cars. Res, wrestling in the old days, okay. Guy, guys were more, more cafe, more, more, more oomph, more. They lived that life, right? I know. Uh, there's the movie that uh, Evan Ginsberg was co-producer of called 350 Days, and it showed. Mm -hmm. The life of the wrestlers, and, and they called it 350 days because that's what their on the road. season was. They were out there. What? Not, I mean, they could be in their hometown, but still, they were wrestling night after night for 350 days. You were lucky if you had the 15 days off a year. My cousin wrestled for Vince McMahon's father, and the only reason why my cousin 
hung up his boots is because he had a brand new wife and a baby on the way. And right when Vince took over from his father, he told everybody on the contract, you guys are on the road all oh, year. No no more home. You're on the road. We got to move this and, and this stuff is before around. cable, a lot of this. So you wrestled oh, absolutely. in New York. You could have that same match in Texas. Nobody saw it. Exactly. So you were out there every night doing the same thing over and over again. Now you fight in the garden. Everybody sees it all over the world. You don't have to do that fight against you. You have more time off in between. I mean, Brock Lesnar, I, I think he works, what, three days a year? He, Bro maybe he makes 35 appearances, but he's sure what? as hell wrestling every week. I think Hogan has the best contract as far as financial goes in wrestling history, but on, on a working schedule. Brock, Brock's schedule is the best thing ever. And, and I don't get it. He's not that good. Here's the thing about Brock. He's a big guy. I'm not going to take that away from him. I know, he's oh, a, he's... I know he's a very skilled wrestler, but he's not great on the mic, and all he does is he's big. He's, he stands there, and he's big. And he's not as good as Andre the Giant was. And Andre the Giant still wrestled his ass off through pain, through whatever, all the way right till the end. And let me tell you something else about Brock. Brock does not like to get hit. No, he does not. Which is why his <laughs> career in MMA was pretty short. And why he's about to go back into it is beyond me. I, I have my theory on that. I, he's giving up more. He's losing money because there's more money for him in the WWE than in the UFC. There's a bigger fan base. Obvi the fan base is incredible. Okay. Well, I think I think both sports are on a downward spiral right now. Um, cause here's the thing: the last, the the first time I should say that a real huge name in the UFC crossed over to wrestling, and to my knowledge, was Ken Shamrock. He wasn't quite cutting it that much in the UFC anymore. Well, People were starting to pass him by. His hands were hurting him because he he was in so many of these bad knuckle brawls or, or very little that he needed the break. So he, he went to wrestling for the break because he didn't have to punch you know he it was more scripted not that his body wasn't taking the beating but he could also juice up a lot more while he was there uh, as opposed to what he was able to do in the actual ufc and look that's and, another thing about brock brock for the last eight months he's in the usada testing pool he hasn't touched anything or or else he loses his shot right at dc now as as far as that was a huge crossover, though, and it brought a lot of attention from the UFC fans who were like, this is real fighting, wrestling is that fake bullshit. Then they started watching wrestling because they like Ken Shamrock. Then it was this crossover with the, the wrestling guys going, this is fun and entertaining, not that lay and pray bullshit that the UFC is doing. But at that time, UFC was changing its format, and they were standing people up. There were rounds. It was, there was a difference, and that crossover brought fans to both. I think that's what they're trying to do with Brock because he's such a big presence. And they blow him up so big, not only in wrestling, but in the UFC. UFC but is all up his ass like he's this greatest thing. What's his record? Is he even 500? No, he's, he's under and, and, and he beat guys. He beat a tune-up guy of Heath Herring. He lost to Frank Mia, who, which was supposed to be an easy fight for him. And then he went back and beat him again, who was well past his prime. And when I say that, it's mainly because of his accident. Otherwise, he probably would have kicked his ass. He beat a Randy Couture who, who was given up probably 100 pounds to him in, in reality and was older and worn out. I, hey, I think Randy Couture 10 years before that probably would have kicked Brock's ass too. Here's the thing about Brock, and, and it's incredible how many now wrestlers are now wrestlers, MMA fighters that have a wrestling background are now going the other way. Right. Yeah, Ronda, there was always the tease that Cyborg would do it, although Cyborg actually is going to go into boxing when the contract is over. But, um, but again, Ronda was getting her ass beat. She was starting to meet her match. Well, she met her match, then she was starting to get her ass handed to her. She could go to WWE and control things now. See, the, 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 really the, the one a, the Her one body thing might be getting a beat, us, but she's not getting a face kicked and punched in like she was in the USA. Right. Uh, Cain Velasquez is now going into uh, Mexican wrestling in August. And again, um, why wouldn't he? Why not? The all these there. guys. Are, and he, he'll probably he make did, more money there than he did in the UFC. 
Look, first of all, He's a big da dude. Dana, Dana White wrestling? Dana White has to sign off on, on these because they everybody's contract is, you know, these things where, where you you can't do something where you're going to get injured. Right. But they have a weird relationship. They definitely do because you not just the Brock crossover, but you started seeing the UFC peaked in, in the days of Randy Couture and, and Chuck Liddell and stuff like that. Then it started fading again and you saw you saw Vince's influence, I, I'm going to say, in the UFC, where it wasn't about the fighters. It was about the trash talk. It was about not putting the best fighter out there, but the most exciting fighter out there. It was about setting up fights, which Dana kind of admitted he did with Tito. Like, he was giving him these fights that he knew would be exciting that he'd win so he could hold the belt for a while because he was a very entertaining guy, was a great trash talker. For some reason, he doesn't like the Diaz's. But Conor McGregor, I think, is perfect proof of that. Is he a great fighter? I don't know. He won a belt, didn't defend it. He won another belt, didn't defend it. Then he goes to boxing, which, you know, could argue was a big joke. Then he comes back and loses. So a, a champ is not winning the belt. The champ is retaining the belt. The, here's the thing. The, the, the Floyd, the, the, the Maymac scenario, okay, that had to go down because the UFC couldn't tell him no. He he was going to make a hundred million dollars. They can't. But come on, do you tell me Dana didn't make a piece of that too? Oh yeah, absolutely. Maybe not a piece of that. No, no, no. He no. had his own side. No, no, no. He, 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 he absolutely. He absolutely did. They, they were co-promoters. Right. Okay. It was Mayweather Promotions, uh, McGregor Sports and Entertainment. Nobody's cared about boxing and for a long see. time. They needed that boost. D and again, I'm not attacking the boxers, but it's just people weren't watching anymore. You know, Tyson was making a. huge... Huge amount of money on the pay-per-views, till he they found out he was too good. Kept knocking everybody out too fast, uh, and, and I know they start tried stringing him along, but he he was not good for boxing, on the money aspect of it. And then have you had an entertaining fighter, of the consistency since him? Because you know people love the heavyweights. They tried, they had some Mayweather. You know you want to go to the lighter guys, yeah. But did anyone have that draw since Tyson? As far as heavyweights are concerned, just in general, who had the draw that a Tyson had? Everybody watched. Everybody would would zero in on Floyd only because. And here's the thing about Floyd, Floyd picked his fights. And again, to me, Floyd is a, is a paper champion because he was his own promoter, which I don't think is fair. And like you said, he picked and chose who he fought and when, when in their career. So I don't think that fifty eight and zero is really accurate. I don't. Mm, I think I look at Floyd as more forty-four now. Okay, I got a big problem with him and Pacquiao when Pacquiao that fight should have happened five, six years earlier at least. And okay. Pacquiao might have knocked him out at that point. Um, but as far as heavyweights go, go after. I mean, people uh, like uh, Holyfield. They did, but they didn't. I don't think after they after the, after Lennox. Lennox was the one I was trying to. Think okay, of, yeah. And the Klitschko's. Um, the heavyweights dropped off for a long time, and they recently came up with this resurgence with the Joshuas, with the uh, Tyson Furies, with the Deontay Wilders, and now there's this crazy push where every single week. There's two or three boxing cards that are really, really good. And, and it's so impressive. That, and and g it's good that boxing's having a resurgence. See, the problem is with, with boxing, MMA, wrestling, everything in general. And, and I know you mentioned this before, too. It's just starting so late. They're putting so much fluff in between. A main event used to be done by 11. Then it was starting at 11. Then it was starting at midnight. Then, you know, at what point do people tune in? Because a lot of people aren't paying 100 bucks for these pay-per-views or 50 or 60 bucks, whatever. Though. They're going out to a bar. They're probably there from 6 or 7 o'clock. By midnight, they're done. They don't care. Well, as of this Saturday, the UFC's pay-per-view is no longer really a pay-per-view. Right. This is the first one where but they're streaming. But it's still streaming. a paid event. Yeah, absolutely. But here's the deal. We're... Where I go to watch, if I'm not covering an event or if I'm not at an event, where I go to watch, without a shadow of a doubt, every single month, 
I have a particular person come up to me and goes, what time do you think the main event's starting? 1, 12.31. And Guar- no gar- for that. Guaranteed. I, I know typically the formula people try to use in sports that's been like that for years is three hours. But he, here's and again, what. You can't, you can't always dictate a live event, but most of them seem to wrap up in three hours. Whether it's hockey, whether it's football, uh, baseball used to wrap up in three hours, and it started getting to four and five, and that's when people started tuning out. I remember when baseball was two and a half hours. Yeah. Two but and he, a, here's why. Hours, but I'm saying everything was usually capped at three. Nothing went over three hours. There's a, a big reason why it goes longer, and that's because... But the UFC starts at one now, four or five with the Facebook fights. No. And um, then the pre-fights. No, no the, and then the, the early prelims. The, then the televised fights. Early prelims are it's early. either 6.30 or 7.00. I think it's uh, the, the the Facebook ones. I think were earlier than that. Then they had the prelims. Then they had the the, the televised. Um, there were three levels on there. Yeah, it's early prelims, prelims, and the main card. Okay. Um, the main card always starts. Well, not always, but nowadays it starts at ten, which I would probably push that up an hour and try to do. But the here's, here's, so here's, if it ends at midnight. It's still not so bad. Here's why you can't though. When you, when you schedule out fights, right, you have to schedule them as if they go the distance. Right. So when if you're having four fights on the early prelim and they're all three-round fights, three, six, nine, twelve, you got to prep for 12 rounds plus, you know, introductions, uh, saying a winner, and in right. between every fight. I'll give you that, but but here's a, here's a great example, especially with MMA, because it's usually three rounds, unless of course it's a championship. Right. So you All know right. the fights, fifteen minutes plus a couple minutes in between rounds. So everything should be done in another twenty minutes in a fight, right? Fair enough. In theory, yes. So if that fight ends in fifteen, put the fluff in there, or bring the guys out the five minutes earlier. Not every fight goes a distance. What was the last there's, time that there's happened? A, there's a reason why. There's a reason why for that. Let's say the, the early prelims, there's, there's four fast knockouts. Right. You're done in a half hour. The, the, the prelims aren't booked to start till 8 o'clock. Let's and say. that's when you play all that fluff. You 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 have you have to wait till eight to start the prelims, even no, if no, everything's the, the fluff pieces that that have nothing to do with the fights. Start showing the the arguments between the main events. Start getting people psyched for that. No, but you you, know. you need that to, if if your early prelims finished in twenty minutes. Right. Right. You're you they're done at seven thirty, let's say, and the prelims aren't starting till eight. You have to you can't start your prelims before eight. Because they're contractually done to air at 8 o'clock. Right, so even if you start from 8 and you pull that, how many fights really happen in a night? It's not like there's no, 20 no, fights on a card. Uh, from, from, the, Bellator, from, from, ele- Bellator, from 8. I'm not talking about Bellator. I'm talking about UFC. Because let's go right for the top, the big door. They're starting at 8 o'clock. Bellator isn't always a whole different story. Because I had tickets to that. And the fight started, I think, at like 5 or 6 there at the Garden. Be- and it Bell- was at the Bell- midnight before. Be- Bellator normally has... No, Bellator normally books 18 to 20, 18 to 20 fights a card. Now, they what also... What does the UFC have? And probably a third of that. No, 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 no. What do they have, really? 14 to 16. Do that? Yeah. From from 8 o'clock on? No, that, that's, that, that, that's the early prelims. Yeah, I'm, not count, I'm counting from, from when the main show starts. How many are actually in there? On the main card, you never have more than six. The main card, the most you'll ever have is six fights. So five Starting of those at fights 10. should take 20 minutes. And the main events, all right, you want you want to add extra time on time because, again, you get the two extra rounds, plus it's a main event. So you want but that's what happens. It. W- once, once, like, an early prelim starts, they run straight through. Once a prelim starts, they run straight through. Now, in between the two, they have to have that break because that's when your you show airs. You, you yeah. can't start a show earlier again, than what's they, supposed to air. If they air. started the show at, at 8 or 9 with the, with the main card, 
Now, what, what, they, what they're midnight. doing really now, what, if what you, they're if doing you starting fighter, Saturday. You want to start a fight at one in the morning for, for a belt, for a championship? You've been there all night, you know? Here's the deal. Well, fighters normally train during fight week at what time they're going to fight. So yeah. that's no problem. But what the UFC actually started in Philly last weekend. Yeah, Philly last weekend. And they're going to continue it this weekend in Atlanta. The early pre everything is starting a half hour earlier than what they used to do. Plus, where is the money? The kids. Kids aren't going alone. They're usually bringing friends, and they're bringing their parents with them. They're the ones who want the, the dolls or the shirts or this or that. You know, They want it a little more than the adults, I think. They get more excited by it. What kid's staying up that till that time when they started watching it so early? You know, make it more family friendly. I'm not saying it's a, it's a it's got to be wrapped up by ten o'clock so you can get up for the early bird special next day. But I, at midnight, at least, I think is reasonable. Look, here's what I would love. I I'm the play by play guy for Jack Hammer Promotions. Quick plug, Jack Hammer. Um, here's the thing: we start our cards at five o'clock. I wish. I wish they would do some afternoon cards. Okay. Um, now, here's the other issue with, with starting cards earlier. You have to worry about the other side of the planet. And it's a oh, very tricky situation because what starts at 8 o'clock here is uh, 3 o'clock in the morning in uh, London and England. And they complain about it. When their start times are quote unquote normal, it's like five o'clock in the morning Eastern right. time. So there's always that, <clears throat> that, oh, we're going to be in Brazil, we're going to be in England, we're going to be at the O2 Arena, but it's a special start time because you got they they're trying to please everybody and like and grandma says. Nobody. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's uh, even still, you know, starting fights at, at what, what do you say, they're looking to do five? Five thirty? Oh, uh, six. I, right. six. So six. So that's three in the afternoon in California. So people are still at work. So they're not watching it. Well, I mean, I know they do a lot of And then if you still, do it later, then, then it, but again, it's going to happen. that many fights in the night. UFC used to be once a year, and it was a handful of fights. Now it's. Every month, it the, seems the, the the numbered cards are once a month, and and listen and plus with the ESPN, want, these undercard ones this no, triple really there's triple them? there is triple me there's triple but when, when you watch them on a Thursday if they were their own or Friday if they were in their own or well, Monday or Tuesday put them on their own card during the week build up build up some hype around those fights because you know what one of those will be or a few of those might be main card as one day well. That, that's a, look, well, at, look at the hype around the first Ultimate Fighter. Every one of those guys became a celebrity. Win or lose. Well, look. The, 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 it's all if, about the hype. If Mark Burnett didn't agree to, to, to air the Ultimate Fighter, none of this happens because th that's what put everything on a fast track. Yeah. I mean, for me, uh, uh, a martial arts purist, so to speak, I like the older style better, where art first was against art, and you went in there, it was one round. Because guys now fight not to lose, which you couldn't do back then. You had a fight to win. Uh, there's times the guy's just about to end the fight, and the round ends, then they come back and get knocked out. You know, it, it alters it a lot. So they're making the fights around the fans. Uh, you know, some fighters don't make it because they're boring. They win, but they're boring. Then you got guys like Clay Guida. He could lose 10 fights in a row and he'll probably still get on because I don't know about so much anymore, but back in the day because he was the, the most exciting fighter to watch. The guy never got tired. He would go out there and throw hands with anybody. And, and, and if that's what you're going for is to keep the crowd interested, having a, you know an eight-hour block of fights, half of which nobody even cares about. you know. Well, see, thank God the UFC hasn't gone to an eight-hour event yet. Thank God. It's not going that way, though. I, I don't. I, it, it seems it like they're getting longer and longer. Because first you had you had the you had the prelims and the televised, 
Then it was the Facebook fights and then the prelims. And they, they seem to be adding on both ends of, of the time frame. No, I remember when, when the USC used to start at like 9 to 10, it was over by midnight. The formula now with early prelims, prelims, and then main card is just a, a reworking of what that once was. I think it works. The only issue I have with it is time. And and like look, I'm I'm first to say this. You can't start so a segment of the show earlier because it's not scheduled to air at that time. Right. The, the the network a network pays money to air at that time. They're not going to rearrange it the very last second. No, I'm just saying when that time frame starts of that block. So if you get the main block, if that starts at nine, that that first fight ends, bring the second fight up. That's what they do. It doesn't seem that way. There seems to be a really long time between fights. Not not once. A segment starts. Yeah, all right. I'll have to, I'll have to pay more attention now, to Now, in between, in between early in between prelim to segments, prelim. Yes, that I know. Cause and then prelim to main. Whenever. Then there's a lot. And I know sometimes the, the, the main event ends up like like a first-round knockout or something. They'll go back and show like an exciting fight from the prelims or right. whatever. But, you know, to, to go back to the, to the Brock thing, my theory on that is, again, the USD is looking for a shot of life. I don't think they... McGregor is that guy right now that's getting, bringing all the excitement to it. And who knows what's up with him? I mean, he's retiring. He's going to do this. No, he's, he's fighting this guy. He's going over there. He's going to box. He's going to, you know, Brock's going to come over. I think they're bringing him over specifically to fight Cormier because, it, it, you know, may, maybe not in Dana's mind, but I think in his mind he could destroy Cormier because he's so much bigger than him. I think he thinks he's going to man. I'm telling you from Brock's point of view. I think he thinks he's just going to go in there, manhandle him. He's going to throw him around. He's going to lay on him, throw those hammer fists, and destroy him. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Kane ragdolled Brock. Right. But Kane was very similar size. K- Kane is nowhere near the has the ability of DC. DC is a hundred times better th- than Kane. But do you think Brock's looking at it that way? Do you think Brock's looking at I'm huge. I'm just going to toss this guy down and lay on him and tire him out. It, I'm not talking about reality. I'm talking about what Brock Lesnar is thinking about this if, if I was in Brock's brain, yeah, that, that's what I would think. Because you saw, when those two were together, it was, you know. Oh, yeah, the, but here's the deal. He was David and Goliath, but I think he's going to have a Cormier's very similar outcome. Always, Cormier's always going to be the, 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 the midget. Plus, he sees John Jones two. beating him, so he knows he's a beatable guy. That's a bit... D- d- I, I don't think he'd fight Jones. No, but J- uh, John's willing to fight Brock. Of course he Stipe's is. Stipe's willing. Everybody's Any willing to fight Brock. Any legit fighter would Wants be willing to, to fight, fight Brock. Brock. I think even the light heavyweights would fight because him. Because they all know they can take him. Yeah. Because they all know Brock doesn't like to get punched in the face. Brock gets again, He's hit. a big dude, and he's got the wrestling skills. And he covers up. But Brock, you know... Turned, Brock Turtles, like... Can you imagine him against, like, a Dan Severin? <laughs> Bro- listen, them. Brock Turtles up like a guy in cold weather. Now, they're blaming that one fight because he just had the... What was he? He had some illness or surgery or whatever it is, and, and they were saying that that's why he was off his game and he fought anyway to his fans, you know. No. When he fought guys that were close in size to him and they punched him in the face, he couldn't handle it. He couldn't handle it. That's why... um Oh my God! Uh, just just left the, the great trainer, um, who I said I wanted to meet, Baz Rutten. Baz Rutten was training him, and he wouldn't get hit because then you're in the wrong sport. I'm forgetting. I'm pretty sure it was him because it was someone he he hit him in the face, and he, he don't do that again. He just said, "Well, then you're in the wrong sport, and I'm not training you anymore." I'm pretty sure that was Brock Lesnar when he first went over. I don't think it was AJ Styles. I don't remember the rest. For some reason, AJ Styles is p- popping in my head. But there was a wrestler that, that legit punched him, and he lost his crap in the ring. He, he just went ballistic. Yeah. And then afterwards, in the back, he completely blew up at the guy. Now, look. And again, is he that big? I mean, the big show was big. Uh, the big show maybe had the gut or whatever and didn't have the build to him. But you got Braun Strowman, you got John Cena, you got big guys. 
You don't need Brock. I don't see what the point of him is. He doesn't fight. You know, when, the champ fought pretty much every week. Unless something legit happened to him and he really got hurt. The champ fought every week. And the UFC, you fight. You fight a couple times a year. You don't fight once every five, ten years because you feel like it. You've got to fight. A fighter's got to fight. And how, how can you possibly come with the record that he has in after the layoff he has and get a championship fight? Because this That's is... That's like me going in and this get a championship is, fight. This is, this is the UFC saying, you know what, DC? You've been a company guy. You've been so good to us. Everything we've asked you to do, you've done. And you've never once whined, bitched, and complained about it. You want to fight Brock? We'll give you Brock. So when it's the first round knockout, Brock's MMA career, is it over? Who knows? Because maybe he'll step back. Wait, because where was he when you had the big champs? The, and when I say big, the big in stature, the ones that he was more intimidated by. He waited till Cormier came in to start talking, oh, I could fight again. I'll go over to the UFC again. I'll, I'll win the belt back again. Here's, here's what I like. I love watching wrestling fans see a wrestler come into the world of MMA. And get smoked. Huh. Case in point, I sat across from eight wrestling fans when CM Punk made his debut. CM Punk got murked by Mickey Gall. They got up, tears in their eyes, and walked out of the establishment. And I couldn't stop laughing. Yeah. Okay. Everyone thinks they come over and do it. It's a different sport. Just like... Did, see, God. there's a difference with... with Will you ever see a like, playing boxer getting in the ring? No. Because it's not worth it for them to get hurt. But the closest to sort of that in age and and, and um, abilities and whatever was James Tony and Randy Couture. Right. They were both. Everyone took off. Oh, and James, and James, was old. And James and they James. They were the same age. Joke. They were within a year of each other. They had they had uh, similar paths in life. They both had a boxing background. Uh, Couture was a little bit more of a wrestler, but he he did have the dirty boxing skills, and Couture beat his ass. And, oh, he always had the chance for knockout. And, and if it was a legit boxing match with legit boxing rules, James Tony probably would have won. Because that's just the way it is. Everybody in their particular sport will always win. Right. Okay. If a baseball player played football, football player is going to win. If a football player played baseball, baseball, it's always going to be that particular yeah. And one. take a typical MMA guy, put him in a judo match, he's going to get killed. Because they, they just learn a little Similar. bit of everything now. I'm saying an actual MMA. If you get a judo practitioner that's got their belts in judo and then learned MMA, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about someone who came in because a lot of you guys just come in with wrestling backgrounds, learn how to throw some punches and defend jujitsu, and they're getting in the ring. Those guys wouldn't last in a specific art. Maybe the, the, whatever background they came from, they would, but they're good at MMA because it, it's just a you know a little bit of everything. Right. And you have to know a little bit of everything. A straight karate guy is not going to come in and win anymore. A straight wrestler is not going to come in and win anymore. It's just not going to happen. But you go into their house and fight their rules, it's a different story. That's why Mayweather said he was going to get in the, in the cage. That was never going to happen. Now, if that, if that was all legit, that boxing match, and I'm saying if, that was an embarrassment to have a 49-0 and guy go against Wait. an amateur in his first fight and pretty much go almost a distance and get hit more by him than anybody ever in, in your career. If Floyd ever got into the cage, he, Floyd is going to say, we're not using four-ounce gloves. We're going to have the 16-ounce pillows on our hands. We're going to... Go you have to take submissions out of it because he, I, he's going to get you, submitted within the first you, minute or you're two. You're not going to knee me. You're not going to kick me. You're not going to elbow me. Because if you, t if, you, you, if you give Connor, or hell, if you give me those opportunities that I can knee Floyd, I can kick Floyd, I can elbow Floyd, I'll smash Floyd. That's why when Ronda wanted to fight him, but she wanted to fight him initially in the cage. You know, would she, would she beat him in boxing? Absolutely not. But if she got a hold of him, and, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. No, it's just, it would be the same thing like, like Floyd fighting the big show at another mania. Yeah. Ronda got a hold of him. She would have flipped him. She would have on him. And he wouldn't have had any idea what the hell happened to him. 
But he would have never agreed to those rules. No, no. no. And that's why he wouldn't box her either, because what did he have to gain? Exactly. What, what, what's he going to fight? 15 rounds, beating up a girl, you know, that whole thing. And what if she lands a couple of good shots? But, ooh, you getting your ass kicked by a girl. He had nothing to gain by that, so he wouldn't do it. Conor McGregor, oh, this guy's got heavy hands. He's an MMA guy. He's the best guy that UFC has right now. You know, you lose to him. It's See, not really he, hurting you so much. Here's what Conor is. And a lot of diehards can't figure this out because diehards are <laughs> loco too. Connor is a PR machine. That's how I look at it. That's it. Connor is a money maker. Right. That's what he is. I don't look at him I, as a legit fighter, even though he's I've skills. been, he I've have been cardio, a, but he's got skills. I've been a Conor McGregor fan since he became featherweight champion in Cage Warriors. I have been on this guy for years, okay? And there's certain people in, in other organizations, that, because I, I'm OCD, I watch everything on, around the planet, where I, I zoom in on a couple of fighters here and there. Connor was one of them. He was always like that. Connor was, I'm taking one belt, I'm going to move forward. I, I don't need to... Win a belt and, and look back. I don't have to work. I've already accomplished this. Why accomplish more there? Just move forward. Win and move forward. In business, that's the perfect way yeah, to you work want to take business. Over everything. But you can't explain that to, to a fan of sports because a, a sports fan is always like, no, you got to stay. No, well, you really don't. You don't have to, but if, if you look at someone like Randy Couture, he won the light heavyweight title. He won the heavyweight title. He went back and forth and defended as need be. And, and he was known as one of the greatest of all times because he could do that. Now, Connor, again, just winning the belt isn't enough if you don't defend it. He should have at least defended each one once before he went over. But I think the fear was, even in his own one, what if I lose? I want to go over there as a two-title holder because it's going to bring more hype, more hype people, it's more money. When he fought Mayweather. That was his goal probably from the start, to, to go against Mayweather. It absolutely, it absolutely was. Because and Diaz he, was a, a wrench in it. That's why, because he lost, he had to immediately rematch him and win that fight. Because if he lost that second fight, it would have completely devalued him. Here's the deal. If you go back to UFC 205 press conference, not even the 205, the, 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 the big uh, spring press conference, where they bring out, like, where they're going to do this Friday with, like, 20 fighters. Connor sat there and said, I don't know what I'm going to do with this, these guys. I'm, I have to call F Ring Floyd and see what Floyd's up to. Right there, if you go back and w watch it, he said he brought up Floyd's name right then and there. That, mean, that way, means they were talking about it even years, well before that. This is years yeah. Before, although I would like to see, I, I'd like to see the the rubber match with Diaz. I would like that. Good fights, and I'd love to see Conor put a little more effort into it and have some cardio going into these well, fights. Well, here's the deal: because was Habib that much better than him, or was he tired because he wasn't prepared for that fight? No, I don't no, know. He, he Habib is another level of cardio. He, but he, he, here's but, the but situation: take the cardio outside of that. I mean, cardio wins fights because if you if you don't knock the guy to submit him out in the first round, you're done. If you got no cardio, could he have? W I'm just saying, I think that would have been a much better fight had he had cardio. Here's the thing: Connor has been warned by John Kavanaugh, okay, his his coach since he was boxing as an amateur before he got into MMA. Take this seriously, or don't come back. And the only home Connor's known is SBG Ireland. If, if Kavanaugh is serious that he doesn't want Connor in his gym anymore, unless he's going to take something serious and do something meaningful, because honestly, John Kavanaugh is tired of, of the pop and circumstance, yeah. the dog and pony show. He wants the old school. And look, look Connor coming up, he said something, he backed it up. He went in there, he was doing everything, and then he kind of got lazy along the way. Does he have, he, winning, never, winning he happens. never has to do anything winning ever happens. again. Just Let's be honest. He's got more than enough money between the money he's made in the UFC, the money he made in boxing, and the money with his whiskey, and, let alone endorsements. And, and he has a clothing line that's about to come that's, out. Yeah. 
He's known for his suits that he wears. So, yeah, you know he's putting his name on something. He's a great businessman. He, don't get me wrong. He I, has, I just lost respect so, for him when he started losing respect for the fight game. My, I like watching fighters. My only problem with Connor is that I see the track that he's on now reminds me a little bit too much of John Jones. And I don't want to see all those mistakes. Because here's the deal. The difference between John and Connor is John did things to himself. Connor's doing stuff with his mouth that's going to get a lot of people hurt. Right. And now, look, I love the trash talk game. Okay? But do what like Diaz's do. They trash talk before the fight. They back it up. Then it's but, over. But the difference w with anybody else in trash talk, including outside of Ali, who used to call George Foreman a gorilla, yeah, and I th and Joe Frazier and Uncle Tom, those were were back at the time. Those were inflammatory terms. You could not call a black guy an Uncle Tom and get away with yeah, it. He was get, trying to get uh, Chuck Webner to, to start the whole racial aspect. Okay. He wouldn't do it. So he said that. He called in the N-word just to get people going. He, he, Ali knew how to get people upset you, and you interested. Can, but again, not, he's another guy that could go out there and pack it up. You can't, you can't go after a group of people the way Connor's doing with no. Muslims. And, and no. I expect that. Because that, that whole thing was a, a, a joke to me. Jumping over and attacking, everyone said he had the right to do it. No, I mean, you're a professional at a professional event, act professional. You want to get him in the street or the gym afterwards because you don't like what he said, that's one thing. But come on, you're on the world stage right there. You won the fight, you don't want to go over and shake his hand, you want to spit on Conicus, what he did, fine. Don't hop over the cage and just start attacking somebody in that moment right then and there. It was a main event. Everybody's watching. With you the, just, with the level again, of... again, Dana acts all upset by everything, but he couldn't care less because what are the cost to either of them? Nothing. Listen, with the way the, 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 the trash thing, talk The has... big bus event. What did that cost him? Nothing. It cost, maybe it cost kind of a little money, but he, he's got it. That's like me throwing a dollar or a quarter on the street. It doesn't matter. He still went out and fought. He still went out and made his money. It cost him nothing. With the level that the two of them... Now, now look, Connor's wrong and Khabib is just as wrong. Right. Okay. With, because you can't call somebody a racist, a, a rapist. That's libel. You unless yeah. unless someone's convicted, or even charged, let alone convicted. Yeah. You can't call somebody a rapist. Okay, that's libel. Especially in this day. And okay. Age. It's, it's a very different you, climate out there right now. And Connor can't can't be calling Khabib's wife a towel and and, and going after Muslims the way right. he's doing. So they're both wrong. If they ever rematched, it has to be in a hell in a cell. It has to be right? a ca yeah. the, the cage and a top to keep people not going in and, and keep those two from getting out. And again, there was no hate in Connor in that fight. He, there wasn't even driving him in that fight. As a matter of fact, I, I mean, like you were using before the time, Helen Keller probably saw that choke coming. And what did he do? He kind of made a half ass effort to go up and he kind of put his hands down, waited. That, that is Connor's MO. He didn't MO. go up and, you know, he didn't even try. He didn't try. That's Connor's MO since Cage Warriors. Yeah. That that if you get him into a submission hold, but he, he taps fast. He wasn't even in the submission hold. He had a chance to get out. As it was sinking in, he just kind of sat there and let it happen. That's his MO. That, that's He's done that his whole career. Though. And then he's going to call him weak and a rat and this and that. He, he just kicked your ass. Stop. You know, like I said, the Diaz's, they go out there, they trash talk someone, they, they get them in, they flipping them off in the ring, or doing whatever, but it's a fight, and they fight them, they win, and then they go over there, the first to pick them up, the first to hug them, you know, and not keep it going, not keeping this fake thing going. Tito, with all the stuff he used to do, and the slitting of the throat, and the digging of the grave, and all that, he would still go over and shake someone's hand. It's disrespectful to him and Shyamrock was to each other. At the end of every fight, it all pushed everybody out of the way and then gave each other a big hug. And then before the next fight, they would do the same thing all over again. I'll deal with that. But the, the bullshit they're doing is infantile and it's hurting the sport. It is. And people, especially when you're throwing uh, uh, things through a bus window and legitimately hurting people. I mean, come on. There's no place for that. Well, that's a whole other ball of wax. Um, wow, we're out of time already. Um Unfortunately, uh, we are out of time. I want to thank Cyclone for coming down. 
We didn't get to the big announcements, so we'll touch on that next week. Uh, the Newman Show is going to be starting pretty soon. There's going to be some big changes to Phantom School Cats and Comics. But when Teresa's here, we'll discuss all that. And again, please check out our sponsors. Share the show. Share his show. Friday, I'm going to be at the Loft in Belmont. See, I told you I'm going to promote myself. It's a big night. It's a contest. Make sure you come down to that. Look on my Facebook page for that. And check out Kayla Logistics and Day 3 Botanicals. And we will see you next week. No problem. <laughs>